What's your first reaction when someone says head lice? Ugh, yuck! Yes, that's exactly it. Although humankind has been fighting these parasites for thousands of years, we still can't get rid of them completely. So why are these little beasts so tenacious? More importantly, are there any surefire ways to defeat them? Spoiler alert, there are. Want to know more? Then stay with me and I'll tell you about it in a couple of minutes. Let's start with the basics. What exactly are head lice? They're miniature parasites that live in human hair and feed off your blood. Sounds pretty nasty, and it is. All it takes to have yourself a good and healthy lice colony in your head is just one little louse. Lice lay about five to 10 nits, or eggs, a day, which hatch in about seven days. So a full infestation takes no more than two weeks to happen. In a month, you'll have almost more lice than hair. I'll say it again, yuck. Head lice are more often transmitted from person to person directly, when you touch someone else's head with yours, or indirectly, when you share a hat or scarf with someone. Since the parasites are really small, no larger than a sesame seed, you can't see them when they climb over onto your precious hair. And if you can't see them, you can't stop them from making your head their home. And that's usually the biggest problem. You can't prevent the infestation until it's too late. And oh, it can be too late with these little pests. Head lice are incredibly hard to get rid of, and that's mostly due to their tenacity and size. I've already told you about the latter, so let's talk about tenacity. It all starts with a knit that's simply too small and clingy to be seen and disposed of. The parent louse lays it right at the root of the hair. If it manages to stay in place for seven days, it hatches, bringing about a baby louse or nymph. Such a beautiful name for such a creepy crawler, isn't it? The nymph then starts feeding on your life's blood by attaching itself to one of your hairs and stabbing its tiny yet oh-so-sharp mandibles into your skin. The teeny weeny hooks on their six legs help lice to latch onto your hair and cling like there's no tomorrow. In about 15 to 20 days, a nymph grows into a full-blown louse, which is ready to lay knits of its own. And when it does, well, you get the picture. All this time, whatever you do, you'll probably fail in the war against these minuscule beasts. They can hold their breath for eight hours. So if you take a shower or bath, they'll most certainly survive. And while some treatments may actually work, most of them are pretty much outdated. Lice are well known for developing resistance to insecticides. In fact, most common treatments are based on the same chemicals that were used dozens of years ago, so they'll probably be useless. By now, head lice have grown almost immune to any poisons we have at our disposal. By the way, there's a common misconception that people who don't wash their head regularly are more likely to get head lice. That's totally false. Lice are born survivors, so it's enough to touch the head of an affected person to get them crawling in yours by next week. Sometimes it's even enough to wear someone else's hat, although that happens more rarely. Lice love places where it's warm and humid, and your head and hair are exactly the surroundings they adore most. Also, there's plenty of food under your skin. Yum! In clothing, however, it's not so warm, and neither is it as moist as lice would like. And no snacks, of course. So while their lifespan is about 30 days on your head, it's much smaller in your clothes, about one to two days at the most. No wonder they jump at any opportunity to crawl over to someplace cozier. If you're wondering why it's mostly kids that get head lice, there's a logical explanation. We've all seen them running around in the playground and bumping into each other quite often. It would be weird if their heads didn't touch sometimes, wouldn't it? If any one kid out of that group is already affected, then the whole bunch of them will probably get the parasites too. And you can't do anything about it other than to prohibit your kid from playing with others. You can't be that cruel, can you? So what's the best way to deal with the pesky pests? Of course, you can always shave your head and be done with it. 
but not everyone is bold enough for that bald style. And since poisoning them is no longer an option, it pays to resort to methods that use mechanical exposure. That is, you either block their breathing holes or just pick them out of your hair. The second way is quite risky since nitpicking is not a foolproof method. Even with the best of the special combs, you can still miss several nits, making all your efforts in vain. If even one nit survives your onslaught, it will eventually grow into a full-fledged louse that will lay more nits, and it will start all over again. Ugh. The most effective treatments are those that simply suffocate the lice. There are different sprays, creams, and shampoos out there that block lice's airways, preventing them from breathing. As I mentioned earlier, they can hold their breath for about 8 hours. So, give them this time at the very least and don't wash off the treatment. I know it can be hard, but you're better off without the little bloodsuckers on your head, aren't you? Still, it's not quite enough to dispose of the lice on your head to forget about this problem. You'll also need to take some additional precautions so as not to suffer from a repeat attack. First of all, avoid sharing hats, scarves, or other accessories that can touch your head or hair. Lice are very clingy indeed, and they can climb over to you in a matter of seconds, spoiling your life for weeks in return. Second, if you or a member of your family has been affected, treat the entire family. You can't know for sure whether you've touched each other's heads, so it's best to stay on the safe side. Third, put the potentially affected clothes, towels, and linens into airtight bags and let them lie there for at least two full days. Then, to stay safe again, wash them all in hot water. If some lice manage to survive the lack of oxygen, they'll surely be knocked off in the washing machine for good. Repeat this a week later since nits and nymphs can be really resistant to anything you throw at them. Yeah, like I said, clingy little beasts. Just remember, whenever you use any treatment to get rid of head lice, use a fine-toothed comb 8 to 12 hours later. Even if the parasites don't survive your attack, they won't come off your head by themselves. Yes, you'll have to comb their tiny little bodies out of your hair. It's a tedious task, but it's necessary. There's also a chance that there have been nits in your hair, not merely grown-up lice or nymphs. No treatment except a good old comb can affect those, so be careful and try to catch them all. If you haven't been able to do that, repeat the treatment as soon as the remaining nits hatch. It will help you avoid new ones appearing in your hair, so you'll only have to comb out the dead lice. When you've successfully done that, congratulations! You finally got rid of those little parasites poisoning your life. Well, my dear Brightsiders, I truly hope this information was useful to you. If you or someone you know has ever suffered from head lice, what methods did you use to dispose of them? Share your secrets in the comments below. Everyone will be grateful for the insight. If you learned something new from this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family to warn them, and click the big red subscribe button to always stay on the bright side of life.